Today we're talking about the Keychron M4. I've bought this mouse myself and I've played for it for around one and a half months and I'm an avid fingertip grip user. I basically tried every small fingertip grip mouse on the market and the Keychron M4 really stands out. <laughs> This inconspicuous looking office mouse, it does look like an office mouse really, uh, is actually quite packing when it comes to the internals. It uses a Pixart PMW3395 sensor. It also has a Nordic 52840 MCU, which is basically top of the line and is capable of doing 4000 Hz, because there's also a 4000 Hz version of this mouse. My doctor has notified me that I'm morbidly obese. The weight comes in at around 35 grams, stated on the specs, but when I weighed it, it came in at around 38 grams. Unfortunately, I already modded the mouse, so I don't want to unmod it anymore to measure the exact weight again. But yeah, it was 38 grams. It has a 300 milliampere battery inside it, which weighs in around 6.6 .6 grams. So when you weight mod it and put in a 150 milliampere battery, you can probably shave off like three to four grams, maybe two grams, depending on the battery but that will uh, impact battery life quite significantly, especially when you use the 4000 Hz version. Oh, hell no, man. What the oh. As you can see, this mouse has an hourglass looking shape because the sides are, well, shaped like an hourglass, which is quite uncommon for small fingertip mice, really. I have read on the internet that some people do not like the hourglass shape for their fingertip grip. And I think the reason is because they use a relaxed fingertip grip where the pinky and the uh, ring finger is actually separated to another. And that causes the, because of the hourglass shape, it causes to like feel a bit awkward in their hands. But what I do in my fingertip grip is mostly uh, having the pinky and the ring finger close to each other, which gives me more stability because it kind of offsets the strength of your uh, thumb, like, like this. And the hourglass shape is actually quite nice for that grip because the indent of the hourglass shape kind of snuggles with your ring finger and your uh, pinky when you fingertip grip. Most people think there are only three types of grips, palm grip, claw grip, and fingertip grip. But what they don't realize is that each type of grip also has their variances. For example, I can grip the furthest point of the mouse when I fingertip grip, which would be like a four forward fingertip grip, which is really different than a four back fingertip grip. And in my experience, the forward fingertip grip it's actually quite a bit harder because the hourglass shape causes your fingers to not really have like straight sides to grip to. A more centered fingertip grip really depends on your hand size. On my 18 by 9.5 centimeter hands, I have no issues gripping it right in the middle, but really small hands or really big hands could maybe struggle with it. And for back fingertip grip is actually where this mouse really excels for me because as you can see, the uh, curves, you can still really take an advantage of these curves when you grip it on far back. And also the clicks are still really easy to actuate all the way back, which is really nice and really unique because most mice actually struggle to actuate the clicks all the way back. And what this really far back finger trip also causes is that the fingers, your uh, middle finger and your uh, pointing finger are right below the sensor which really gives you like a direct feeling when you micro adjust. Well, the scroll wheel is actually the smallest that I've ever seen on any mouse whatsoever. Like it's, it's tiny, but the steps are quite nice. I have no issues with the steps at all. They feel quite good. They're not as harsh as on mice like Zowie mice. And yeah, I like the steps. The click is also really nice. It's, it's not too hard. It's not too light. Yeah, no issues with the scroll wheel. And also the uh, height between the mouse click itself and the scroll wheel is not that uh, far too different. Like the scroll wheel is not too high where you like lift off your mouse to get to the scroll wheel. Uh, it's not like a mountain that you have to climb basically. What the hell? Well, to be honest, these mouse skates are <laughs> not good. They're not good. They basically feel like uh, stock Zowie skates, which are not 100% PTFE because they're dyed black. And while they are quite okay for cloth pads, uh, when you use them on glass pads, they will wear off really fast. And the uh, glide is, mm, I did not like it, but that is a subjective opinion. So what I did is uh, just remove them and replace them with uh, X-ray pad obsidian uh, dots. 
And as you can see on my unit, I removed the entire sticker because then uh, the height between uh, this part of the mouse and the part where the these free skates are is actually even. So uh, you can use more than free skates and have a more even glide when you have this sort of like bigger C on the top and on the bottom. But um, keep in mind, if you do this, I'm pretty sure you will void your warranty. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. Since I play left-handed, I cannot really give you a good opinion about these side buttons because I don't use them. I always remove them in my mice, but I still stand by the opinion that when you use fingertip grip, you should not use side buttons at all. Because as I talked in my previous video, when you press side mods buttons with your thumb, you will influence the movement of your mouse simultaneously, which can throw your aim off in really clutch situations. So what I do is I just always remove them. There's a side button PCB in the internals and it's really easy to remove it. You can keep the plastic of the uh, side buttons itself still in the shell and put a uh, grip tape on top of it. Preferably really thin grip tape like the X-Ray Pad Cicada grip tapes, which are 0.2 millimeters. So you don't really influence the overall shape of your mouse because the grips are really thin. Well, the clicks, some people say, are really heavy, which I cannot agree at all. Like, the clicks itself are uh, transparent blue shell pink dots from Huano. I think they're quite snappy. I really like using them. Uh, they're not heavy at all for me. You can also far, uh, far click back. I think they're really nice and uh, I have no issues with them. Here's a little sound test. What is really amazing and unique about the shape is that the width of the mouse is the thinnest that I have ever seen on a mouse and ever felt. And that really causes the shape itself to feel like you're using a pen. Because, you know, you don't use pens like this. You use pens like this. Like the distance between your pointing finger and your thumb and maybe your middle finger as well is as small as possible. Like if you use thicker pencils, you will be more uh, inaccurate when you draw. So I kind of use that same logic on mice as well, that I kind of prefer mice with a thinner width, and this is the thinnest of them all. And that really gives you kind of like a feeling that you're drawing. I just really like it. It's really unique. And here's a little comparison between all of the shapes of my small fingertip mice. I'm not even sure if this mouse has a coating. Like the plasticky feel of the mouse is not that great. Like it's actually kind of slippery, but like I said, using grip tapes completely mitigates that. So just get X-Ray Patrick Cicada grip tapes. Like I can just completely vouch for them. A little side note about the dongle. Keychron uh, mainly sells keyboards. So the dongle is actually a little keyboard. And I think that's quite neat. It looks pretty good on your desk, in my opinion. You only get the keyboard uh, dongle when you get the 4000 Hz version. We smoking that IBM quantum computer. The software is quite basic, but it works well, and all of the important settings are included. When you buy the mouse, the first thing you should actually do is download the software and use it, because the click debounce on default is actually on 4 milliseconds, and you want to put that on 0 milliseconds to have the lowest click latency. Other than that, uh, the software is quite uh, intuitive. What I really don't like is that uh, when you plug in the mouse, uh, you cannot see the uh, battery status. So you always have to like remove the cable, put back the uh, 4K dongle to see the battery status. What I would like to see is an update so when the mouse is plugged in and charging, uh, you can see what the battery status is. What you should also do is, uh, when you plug in the mouse, is go to the uh, polling rate settings, because the default setting for the polling rate when playing wired is 125 hertz. So 
if you are in a clutch situation and your battery runs out and you have to play wired, you should play on 1000 hertz. Once you once you clicked on 1000 hertz, it saves on 1000 hertz. So when you uh, plug in the cable, it will always be 1000 hertz. I also like that you can change the porting rate on the back of the mouse as well as the DPI. There are two separate buttons for that. And when you're not gaming, you can just uh, set it to 500 hertz to save battery. And when you wanna play, you can just uh, put it on 4000 hertz. There are uh, indicated uh, lights on the back of the mouse and they are adjustable on the software. One thing that is very important is that you should not use the cable that is included with the Keychron M4. The cable is a USB-C to USB-C cable and you get an adapter, a USB-C to USB-A adapter. What happens if you use these with the 4000 Hz dongle is that you get immense polling rate issues. So I would highly suggest you to uh, use a different kind of USB-C to USB-A cable that you have lying around or buy separately. That sucks, but it is what it is. Special credits for Imri B on Twitter who found this out. My final take on the Keychron M4 is that this mouse is a hidden banger. It is a uh, inconspicuous looking office mouse which is not over the top. It does not look like you are a gamer, like the, the st stereotypical gamer with uh, 3000 RGB lights and whatnot. It's just a small, black, really well-functioning and awesome mouse which has a insanely unique shape which is catered to fingertip grip and if you want to play something unique and you don't want to spend a lot of money because this mouse is super cheap it's 50 us dollars for the 1000 hertz version and 70 dollars for the 4000 hertz version this has in my opinion completely destroyed the uh, g wolves hsk pro and the g wolves hsk plus because they're really expensive like the 1000 hertz version i think costs like 100 to 110 dollars and the 4k hertz version costs 150 dollars and essentially they are the same mouse like they both have the same mcu they both have the same sensor they have a similar weight why go over the top and buy a g wolves in my opinion like of course the shape is different they are wider but uh, when you want to tip in your toes uh, into fingertip grip i think the keychron m4 is a complete no-brainer and I love using it. It's one of my main mice that will always stay on the desk. And it's actually quite crazy that a mainly keyboard focused company is doing more innovation in terms of shape than pretty much all of the other players uh, in the mouse market. So yeah, it's insanely cheap. It works really well. You have to tinker a bit to make it work really amazingly. But if you all do all of the steps that I mentioned, it is really nice. So yeah, this has been my review for the Keychron M4. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment. And if you want to support my work, I have an affiliate link in the description below if you consider buying this mouse. Thanks a lot for watching. More videos are coming and see you next time. This incon... This incon... Three, two, one. This inconsi... Incon... Inconspicuous...